Hmm. It looks like we are going to have Beastie on the Chinese, as expected. Baywood once again taking to the English. And well, uh, once again being predictable. It's a repeat of how we saw them start the day. B on the Delhi and Jesse taking the French again. Jess has had some some decent showings to the French so far, actually. So curious to see what they can do. Very micro heavy sieve. Yeah, but this is the civilization she plays the most by a massive margin we're talking about. Whether that's 1v1s, whether that's uh, community games, whether that's actually ranked team games, this is by far her most used civilization and be as adapted to this. And I think part of the big strengths of this team is that both players are playing a civilization they're very comfortable with. For some teams, you have the impression that the pro player has to pick a civilization that complements the apprentice players, but that may not necessarily be the favorite civilization for that pro player to play. But for this duo, Jess is French, it's her favorite, and B is going to be more than happy to supplement that with Delhi, which is probably in his top three civilizations easily. Yeah, and he has such a unique kind of take on the Delhi, right? Where most people are still in the Dome of Faith fan club. He's very much a hard believer in Tower Victory. He believed it before they even buffed it. Uh, for those unaware, they made a, a pretty big change to Tower Victory that benefits its scalability. It used to be Tower Victory had a small AoE, and any units that came in the AoE got their attacks to be buffed if they were infantry. They changed it now so that any building in the influence of a mosque, any unit produced out of those buildings will get the permanent attack speed buff. It means that you, as you scale into the late game and you have 10, 20 racks pushing units, they're all going to get that attack speed. Whereas before, you'd have to rally point them towards the Tower of Victory first. Yeah, indeed. And uh, that is massive if you think about the fact that one of the biggest limitations from the Tower of Victory when the game was released was that it was impossible to manage your units, at least for a long yeah. period of time, in a way that you always get the buff. But now that the buff is sustainable, it is actually a very dangerous buff to fight against. And we have seen how even the Ottomans struggled against this one. I think the first set we've opened the day with, we have had an Ottoman boosted by the matter and still struggled against the Delhi Flood of Archers. Now, yeah. English and Chinese, they might have an even more significant problem from that. Yeah, the cool thing is that I think if you find a way to balance your economy to allow for the scholars still and just treat them more as a value, very valuable unit as opposed to something that can kind of tank on the front line and be risked, um, this build is just better long term. Because usually, like players, they, they kind of still want to go towards home blades. We've seen a few players today still go towards home blades with the House of Learning and tier three. Well, if you do tech up and you want to go for home blades, which is a, the plus three melee attack to um, lancers and men at arms, wouldn't it be very nice if your men at arms could also have a 20% attack speed buff? It's scary. Oh, yes. it, it's it is very brutal. scary. But it's also the archers. That's what really makes it intimidating because it's not even something that shows very well against longbows in particular. But if you go back and watch some OG Tower Victory builds from B back in the days of, uh, I think it was probably even late Golden League, but early Road to Volo, you're going to see that the large group of archers with the Tower of Victory buff are able to melt knights even. So yeah. you can flood and you can field 70, 80 archers in a relatively short amount of time. And because you don't do a terrible amount of damage on a knight from a single arrow, that attack rate buff comes in clutch when it comes to dealing with heavily armored targets even. And it's even better when you don't even have to face heavily armored targets, like when, for example, matching up against the Chinese and the English in Feudal. Well, here's a crazy thought for you. By having Tower of Victory, when you dive an English player, the only advantage that Longbows have is range. The attack but, speed. Yeah. The, the network of castles attack speed is the same as the Tower of Victory attack speed. Yeah, so, you, so you actually nullify one of the big benefits of the English on the defensive. Yeah. And that range advantage is difficult to use. It's not impossible, yes. obviously, but at the pro level, it's just difficult, especially because your longbows are, in return, slower than the archers. So it's not that challenging for those archers to gap close. Sure enough, you're going to take some casualties, but then you're even going to chase down those longbows. So that range advantage isn't as big as it sounds in a matchup like this. It's big in small numbers, but once you reach like 20, 30 on each side, I kind of compare it more to like muskets when you're being charged, right? Like, you know, you get one shot off and then you probably switch over to a bayonet or a sword. It's that kind of feeling. Like, obviously the Lombos aren't going to switch over to sword, but it's that <laughs> fact that big advantage you had in ranged is now gone. You're going to be yes. down in the dirt, getting muddy with your opponent. 
Indeed. Speaking of getting down and dirty, here comes the first knight from Jesse. Let's see what she can find over here, because Beastie is playing with the Chinese. Probably the biggest wild cards of this game. It's gonna be interesting to see how Beastie plays this one. He already is in Song Dynasty. It's a crazy thought, but could you imagine Chukanu here? Feels awkward alongside English, but wait a second. Could we go to the English base? Like, I, I might just have a complete brain meltdown, but didn't I see an Abbey a couple of moments ago? Nope. Okay, no. it's brain meltdown. Uh, you okay there? Do you want to splash it? <laughs> you need to step away. You want this no, too I... badly. It's not happening. Like, but what if the Delhi healing sucked because the opponents <laughs> had Abbey of Kings healing? Oh, okay, it's not happening. Uh, so no, we're well, not going to get that play. But what we might see, like the chicken is not the worst of ideas because if you're able to gap close, like you'll beat the archers. The issue you will have though is those archers have better range and better movement speed. So they can easily just stay on the edge. Um, I prefer BC to play condensed because one cool thing about being up against the French is when you're the Chinese, I don't think there's a harder sieve for the French to dive. In fact, these oh. are the two hardest sieves in the game for the French to dive. I think I know what's coming. I was looking weird at the idea of Chukanus, but this was very much a rushed Song Dynasty over here. Mm -hmm. But look yeah. at what Beivud is doing. He is not making any army, essentially, just a handful of longbows. Yeah. Fast, fast, he's fast. making a market. He's probably going to sling oh. Beastie here. Like, there is no uh, other reason uh, to make a market here. Maybe other than selling food, but I feel like this is going to well, be a full sling of Beastie. I think it's his gold, right? His gold is on the south side and doesn't want to build units. So maybe he doesn't want to... Okay, nope, it's no, a sling. you're on point. It is going to be sling. Interesting choice here. Uh, I think it's because BC wants to go second TC, right? So he needs the food. He's still going to run out, though. I, I still feel like the play is fast castle for both of them here. Before B starts to escalate things by going for sacred sites. But good read. Yeah, I, I, I can see that being a thing. But part of the reason why I was thinking about the Chukunu is because... At least on paper, I could see a sling into Chukunu being an idea. I don't think it would work. I don't think that the no. sling itself gives you enough numerical advantage in time. So I agree. I think it's probably sling into Castle and then maybe Lancers for Beastie or something along those lines. But you see that Baywood is fully logged in on an English farming eco. He's not mining gold, not because he can't access it. It's because the Damn. most effective use of his villagers is by working on the farms and then sending all those resources to Beastie. All right, BC's like, Baywood, I don't want you to have to feel pressured to put a castle behind your base. Just give me all the food. I'll place my castles ahead of my base. We'll make our way out of the field. Ah, I'm just man. Baywood had like a, a pretty struggle central game up against uh, Mr. and Matrix earlier. But I'm, I'm glad to see them shift strategies, right? Because in that game, there was no tributing. There was no sharing like this. No. But it's, it's pretty crafty considering that BC has flexibility to either rush his tech ups or just rush villages right and the, i don't think it's gonna go free tcs but with this amount of tribute coming away you arguably could and get away with it yeah i think he probably has done the math and the idea is that i'm willing to forfeit all the sacred sites and i know that you won't be putting up that much aggression because you will just be happy to take all the map control here but in return i'm gonna have a fast eco escalation two tcs plus being slung by the english player and if you look at the resources of beastie right now i think he could be getting close to castle age he could nail a sub 10 minute castle here, and then Lancers could be on the menu. Indeed, there comes Castle yeah. Age. I, I think this is why they just need to go in. Like They're, they're way too hesitant, and it's going to cost yeah. them. They, they should be sniffing out the issue here by now. It's like, where's their army? Why are they not fighting us? Why are they not coming out? We're up against a Chinese player. We know we're on the clock. So they're going to start capturing sacred sites, but you need to start fishing for some idle time. Like Jess has built a lot of knights and won the big value of knights. It's not this whole idea, let me go in and kill a villager. It's let me go in and idle five villagers and live. That's yes. your goal as a French player. And they are hesitant to dive in. They are staying outside a base and they would have a lot of exposed farms. There could have been a lot of damage potential. Now it looks like we are in for palace guards. Those by themselves yeah. won't win against the knights, but if you mix in a couple of spears- the archers, though. Yeah. Could be right. lethal, especially with Sling, because you're going to have a lot yeah. of them very soon. Well, because the logic here is like, you can build spears, but the archers still count you. So you build pass guard, you count the archers, then you come back to the spears afterwards. And you know that the archer count is going to escalate quicker than the knight count. So you need to address the archers first. And this dive in, limited value. Tech up does complete, means you have to back away. Also means B's probably going to want to switch away from mass archers, because if he continues on this path, it's not just pass guard he has to worry about. There's a possibility of B's as well. That's right, the best way to beat a B with a B. 
Yeah, they need to prioritize Baywood here, I feel. He's completely undefended, and the big book of team games always says that if one player is slinging, that by definition means that he's making almost no army. So if you just dive his base, you can wipe him out, and Beastie, he was busy building up his eco. Beastie couldn't help. If all these villagers... Villagers? Wait a second. I thought those were archers, but those are villagers. What are they up to? Um, They are Hello? getting wood. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, yeah. They're like, okay. whoa, whoa, whoa. Beastie's going to run out of wood soon. So what if we just take his wood lines away? There we go. They, they, I think he's trying to prep for castle and to keep drop. Yeah. So that should be the plan. Feels... In fact, if we check his resources, we'll be able to see for sure. Feels a little premature, though. It probably feels like he can stay here for quite a while, and he might be right. Beast is still lacking yeah. army. His eco is being shut down. Oh, and... wait. He can no, so, so he can set up a mosque and set up archery ranges here and get the attack speed buff and get troops immediately. That yeah. might be the play. Yeah, and you could just go ram rush. Beastie mm -hmm. has basically no army, and remember what I said about the archers with the buff from the Tower of Victory. They are performing really well against heavily armored units even, and palace guards, especially if you don't have the ranged defense upgrades on them, they will still melt to that many archers, and those longbows, they oh are God, this is uh, more desperate. than ambitious. It's starting to look desperate. Like, the numbers were really high being tributed before. Now it's like, yeah, I sent you some pocket money. I, I sent you some change I found in my pocket. Here's 100 wood. Do what you will with that. It's, like, it's not going to get you the same amount of bang for buck as the previous exchanges. Like, the only thing BC no. has going for him is if he can get three nest of bees. But you see the dive now from Jess. They see the first nest of bees. They don't want to allow us to amass. Archers are going to move in, but you need to stagger these right now. Repairs are going to be there, so it looks like Nesta Beast is going to survive. Whoa. That's a lot of villages that could be sacrificed. Archers, uh. notice that they're going line formation. The skulls are offsetting a decent amount of damage, but still a heavy loss to the army. It looks like Beastie's going to hold. Yeah, Beastie had a ter terrific fight over here, really. I just can't find words for it. The Spearman massacred all the knights. At least 10 knights went down over here. And the archers, mm. they're just ground down to oblivion. Many of them so heavily damaged. TC should be able but to clean them up. This is life. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of dead villages, folks. But at the same time, it is China, right? Like, half the copium and then look at the eco count. Even after all those corpses, still, Beastie's team has a 14 villager lead. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And the big thing is that he cleans up the army. BC wasn't able to access gold for quite a while. It got shut down. He had a lot of food, he had a lot of wood, but he couldn't access gold to make the premium units. Now he cleans this up, he accesses gold, and he can finally unlock the full potential of Castle Age. Now, things are still scary for him because you do have to keep in mind that there is a Sacred Site countdown right now in the favor of BC, and it's down to seven minutes already. And they're still outnumbered five to one in army count, but the situation looks slightly less grim than what it was two minutes ago. I think they got forced to dive too early. Like, if they made that dive at four minutes, it puts it really puts strain on Beastie to get out fast. But now he's got a very calm amount of time to build up and move out. And I think he will get enough pass guards. There's that play we talked about from B, so it is the proxy base. It makes a lot of sense. So just to remind people, this isn't Lamal new play. Why no Tower of Victory buff? It now gets applied from any uh, to any buildings in range of oh, mosques. No. So when the unit is produced, it comes out with attack speed. And I don't know how the knight didn't notice this. Uh... Oh, he's just about, just about. Jess notices just in time. The previous knight ran past. So let's we'll keep the sacred site timer going. But the palace guard numbers are increasing. Beastie has a third nest of bees on the way. This archer ball is not going to work anymore unless they can snipe the bees. The problem is that Beastie has done such a good job protecting those nest of bees. Jessie did the right thing. She tried to dive in, snap those nest of bees, but the body blocking was terrific from Beastie, and Jessie wasn't able to get rid of them. And remember, both players from Bee's team are still in Feudal Age, so the only way that they will snipe those nest of bees will be with knights. They can't access Springholds, and this buys a lot of time for Beastie to build up the critical mass of Palace Guard, Spearmen, and then nest of bees. Saving that sacred site might have been a lifeline here for B and Jessie, because they might very well have to rely on that win condition. It's happening again. I'd actually love to see Beastie just go to the edge of the sacred site. So when a knight comes in, he'll brace and he'll stop it getting on the sacred site. But looks like it isn't going to matter anymore. Pascal also joining in. So win conditions about to disappear. You know, it's kind of crazy to think that the guy called B doesn't have the answer to the bees. But unless he can sliver his way up into castle age, which in theory he should be able to do. But if he does that, he stops building archers. And here we go into the choke points. Worst case scenario, nest of bees. Ready to open far. Heavy flurry coming out. 
insta hit there. Aren't going to retreat away from the Knights, but a Massman of Spears will body block in those Knights, and Jess has lost the entire battalion to Blinkly Eyes. Spread out fight once B, again. I mean, he's going to lose everything yet. Like, you can't yeah. do anything here. The choke point, the usage of the choke point is terrific here by BC. Jess simply can't reach those nest of bees. And even with the staggered formation, your archers are getting wiped out by four nest of bees. Palace Guard joined the fun. Oh my god. And I would dare to say that Beast lost less than five units for wiping out the entire army of the opponent over here. This may have been the single most cost efficient fight I've seen in like a couple of months, even. And do you want to know why it was so good? Look at his composition half spears half palace guard so these archers don't even know what to target right when, when you're seeing that massive rush towards you even a player like b can't correctly micro and get maximum value on each attack and instead now he's going to be attacked the follow-up is just going to wipe him out next to he even sacrificed the village he says please be see bc listen i will give you this tribute you seem to like tributes this game i will give you a tribute of blood if you just leave us be it's BC too late now he says okay 10 seconds and then i'm coming again run <laughs> They've woken up the dragon now. It was a full sling from the Chinese player. Now Beastie has stabilized. He's got a functional 2TC Song Dynasty economy. He's got Nest of Beasts to wipe out the archers with. And still, no response from Jesse and B that can really deal with those Nest of Beasts. The knights simply can't get to them because Beastie's micro is so great. Hey, you know what really won this game? Look, look at that army from Bayward. Three Lombos. BC right now spots those three longbows and goes, what the hell, man? That's that's an extra, like, 100, 200 wood you could have sent me. What's, uh, what's going yeah, on here? Yeah, exactly. It's like, that's three longbows more than what you should have made. Exactly. What about those longbows you lost earlier as well? Oh, okay, I'll be nice to you. You gave me a thousand food. You know, the crazy part, like, it's really well played by Baywood, because if you look at their base, they didn't build that third farm cluster further away until they saw that B and Jess were very tunnel visions. Yes. So they got away with this because you know they, they, they were kind of reaching a point where they were going to have to expand eco to dangerous territory. But B and Jess felt so pressured by the castle of the Chinese, they put everything into that assault. Just yeah. a great read and reaction by Baywood. I really wonder how this game would have went if that commitment that we have seen from B and Jesse goes towards Baywood, not Beastie. Baywood had not a yeah. single unit inside his base. Sure thing, Beastie would be up to Castle Age and he would have a good economy, but he would essentially have to play 1v2 for the next 50 minutes because his teammate would be dead by definition. I mean, he had he got a single unit in his base. He had three times more units than you thought he had. Like, he's got three, unit, three Lombos. They, I mean, have you ever watched Robin Hood? They could have done it. Totally would have been fine. Definitely not in denial right now. You're right, though. It's like that, that layout of the base was prime for raiding. In fact, if we go back to the red base, you can see with that, that extra cluster made on the left side, like if you look at Baywood's base, it kind of reminds you of one of like the villages, <laughs> villages. God, that's hard to say the correct way. Like the Chinese born villages from the campaign. They're the ones you walk by on the way to the main army and like the peasants give you like a small tribute of food. It's <laughs> literally that. Yeah, it's it's looking like that when Mapmaker in the campaign just says, ah, this map is too empty. Let's just make a random NPC village here just so that it looks less empty. And yeah, the difference here is that that farming eco is really making a difference in this game because Beast is being slung a lot of food. And if you look at the type of units he's making, Palace Guard Spearman mainly, that's essentially food costing units. So he doesn't even need to spend a lot of his villagers on food. He can just focus wood and gold and... He's going to get enough food from his teammate to just continue production of the infantry. It's up to 1,500 in tribute. Even the wood as well. Like, it's kind of crazy the English are providing wood. That's the thing that they don't really gather well. They usually have issues with that. He's like, dude, I saved this much on farms because they're only half price for me. Here, take this as well. I don't need it. I'm not building units. Are you at pop cap yet, Beastie? No? Okay, I'm going to keep tributing. Oh, this could be big. Wrapped on... I, I don't think it is. The choke point. It's going to hold Do it back here. you got to delete He's the walls. Gonna lose out. He needs to. Jess, trying to get rid of them now. Oh. Well, the wall's going to go down, but like, he's just not getting around quick enough. So many knights have died. The nest of bees is the anti-B here. Instantly, the archers are gone, and they are just toying with Jess. Oh She's my doing goodness. ring and ring of roses with a pocket full of posies or pokies in this situation, as the knights are going to get wiped. There is no way back from this. The positioning from Beastie was just spectacular. Every single moment the knights tried to wrap, his positioning and repositioning was perfect. He just didn't let those knights reach those nest of bees. 
20 knights were sacrificed to kill just a single piece of nest of bees and the infantry still remains terrific micro here by beastie and that is going to force a gg here from b what a game here and really what a combination of strategies and execution here the trust from beastie that his teammate is going to deliver enough resources for them to make this strategy work and then the trust from Baywood and Beastie that he's going to make this unit composition work and never miss Microwave to lose those nest of bees. Great trust in these teammates and great delivery of a risky strategy here to take down B and Jesse. And with that, B and Jesse are out of the tournament here on the loser's bracket. They are. And you know what? It was a, a beautifully poetic way to go out of this tournament because no matter what you say, no matter who was going to win this, it was won by B. Less to be in the situation. And I, honestly, the patience that came out, you mentioned the dive in the base where they got desperate. They didn't have a way of answering them. And you just saw how on point BC is, man. Like that micro is impressive. He just forced this kind of concaved battle in the choke point that Jess couldn't exploit. Even with that many knights, you have to remember that she is trying to charge into veteran spearmen with feudal age knights. Ain't gonna end pretty. Doesn't matter how many nights you got. And I mean, what you get maybe one, two in the nest of bees in the end, just great plays coming out from the two to make it work. And before anyone says, oh, the sling strat's too strong, please nerf. Oh, why they let them do that? Oh, that's not reasonable. It, it's, they get taxed 30%, I believe it is, when they tribute. So it, it's not easy to make great bang for buck. Like in theory, there's still ways that the, the two player team that are building units can fight back. It just seems like B and Jess weren't able to find the way. I am genuinely curious at the kill death statistics of Beastie. And there it is, 196 units killed, 72 units lost only. And most of that was probably in that initial push when he didn't really have the army set up. Ever since then, his KD was probably up in the skies. And I mean, it's like a, Bay, it's like a yeah. Baywood's kill death. <laughs> <laughs> he got him, though. Yeah. He got him. <laughs> I really want to know when was the time when he killed the three units. I actually uh... remember... Remember the time when he sent like eight longbows? Yeah, like, yeah, when he Kamikaze dived yeah. the army with eight longbows and he picked off three units. That was it for him. <laughs> yeah, but they, they, they sent a message that day. The message was clearly received as, what are these crazy people doing? Why are they attacking us? This, this, these peasants and farmers? What? It kind of was that, right? It was the peasants and farmers making tributes to their lord and the lord and savior beastie will carry on the journey for them. They are going to go through to the next round. Lose around number four where they will be matching up against Crackety and Archie. Interesting. I wonder if uh, everyone in that game wants China.